This is your Barbados Today news update from Monday, January 17. Afraid of what? That's the question veteran Barbados Liberal Party member and Ambassador Elizabeth Thompson posed in response to claims made by former government minister Senator Lucy Mo that she had grown afraid of Prime Minister Mia Motley. Mo, who was relieved of ministerial duties last year, said power has changed Motley and she's concerned about democracy in the country. But at a political meeting last evening at Watson Christ Church, Thompson rubbished the charges. We are told to be afraid of Mia Motley. The Bible says, by their deeds you shall know them. Let's look at Motley. She and some of her team, years ago, had a falling out or whatever happened. They changed leaders. Motley came back and put those very same people into her cabinet. They were part of her team, and they stand loyally behind her tonight. Nobody abused or treated Mia Motley worse than Owen Arthur. There was nothing he did not say about her, or there was nothing good that he said about her when he was writing. She came back as Prime Minister and treated him with the utmost graciousness, the greatest magnanimity, the most generosity, and then delivered the eulogy at his funeral. You can't ask for more than that. Where is the cruelty? Where is the despotism? So when we are told that you have to be afraid of this woman, afraid of what? We have seen how, we, how she has treated those who have wielded blows against her, those have, who have wounded her. So we know that she is not a vindictive or cruel woman. We have seen it. We know that she puts service above self because we have seen it. Thompson, who shared her story of being sat as Minister of Health in 1999 by then Prime Minister Owen Arthur, suggested Mo, a former confidant of Motley, needed to reflect on her statements. That a Prime Minister has the right to choose who or she wants in his or her cabinet. It is not an entitlement, and your ego must not get so big that you put self before service. You must accept that when the Prime Minister calls you and says, come, you come in silence and you smile. And when the Prime Minister tells you, go, you bloody well pack up and go in silence and you smile. And you say to the nation what I said to Owen Arthur, Thank you, Prime Minister, for the opportunity to serve. You don't go nowhere and abuse the Prime Minister. You don't go nowhere and abuse the party leader. You don't go refuse to go in the Parliament and draw the money and refuse to go in the Parliament and talk on behalf of the people of the country. And I want the people who are doing that, if there's anybody who has behaved that way, to reflect on whether this is appropriate or not. Pollster Peter Wickham also weighed in on the revelations made by Lucio Mo. Speaking on Barbados Today's Election Pulse program last evening, the regional pollster said the position outlined by Mo is in line with the DLP's messaging on the campaign trail. The party has been asking Barbadians to vote for democracy. That is convenient and I think it will work in many circles. However, the extent to which uh, a political party that is as distinguished as the Democratic Labour Party has come to the stage where their, their uh, full page ad in the newspaper is telling people not to vote for them because they have a better team, but to vote for democracy because you really need to vote against the Barbados Labour Party and quote unquote despotic leadership. Uh, it is something that I, I have some challenges understanding whether the public of Barbados will buy it, quite frankly. But, you know, what Lucille Moore did today, you know, in, in, in political circles, they say she played her hand and she played it magnificently. Um, as to whether or not it's going to move the needle, I doubt it. Uh, because I, I have genuinely said that I don't believe that the Lucille Moore's and the Lynette holders of, of this world, because they're not candidates and because they're not really part of the national political conversation, can really move the needle significantly. However, DLP President Verla de Pisa says the country should take heed to the warnings by Moore who was a friend of the PM for over 50 years. De Pisa made the comments while addressing a national meeting in Deacon's Farm last night. 
But what we have seen in the last three and a half years is the exact opposite. A direct and frontal assault on our democracy has taken place before our very eyes. And I say that without fear of contradiction. Because when somebody's best friend from school days can stand up and say, I cannot do this anymore. I have to put my country first. You know that you are dealing with uncertain and desperate times. When we can have individuals walking through and taking over the poster on every part of the island as though we are creating some sort of demigod in the country and then telling me that it because my poster not all about Barbados that that means that my people are not standing with me it is because my people can stand on their own two feet with two days to go before general election political scientists are predicting that Verlo de Pisa will have an uphill battle to reclaim St. Lucie for the Democratic Labour Party Speaking during Barbados Today's election pulse, Devron Bruce says the constituency has been one where the Dems have been losing ground for some time. The fortunes of Verda de Pisa and St. Lucie might be a bit more rosier than what has been predicted. She does have some strengths up there. She's been working up there for the last two years. And again, the argument the party has been making is return the Dem seats home, so to speak. But regarding your question specifically, no, the Democratic Labour Party's constitution speaks to a political leader and it speaks to a president. Verda de Pisa is the president of the party. She is the assumption they assume politically as well too because they don't have any parliamentary seats. But the real game begins in parliament and there's no guarantee that any political leader or whoever leads you into an election is guaranteed to be opposition leader. So I don't think that has ever been the case. We assume that's the case, but quite frankly, the game is on for whoever actually remains or gain their seats. There were also some suggestions that the PISA could face another leadership challenge once the January 19 poll is over. That's the view of noted UE political scientist Dr. Christina Hines. Hines said that even if De Pisa is able to win her seat, there's no guarantee that she will remain the party's leader. Those may well be St. Lucie, but if Ms. De Pisa is not able to win in St. Lucie, someone else who wins one of the seats, assuming that the DLP will win a few seats, will need to be selected as the leader of the opposition and they will have to decide that among themselves they're going to have to work that out one way or another and i would also go as far as to say that even if mr pisa wins st lucy we cannot be certain depending on who the other people are mm -hmm. if she will end up as the leader of the opposition and this is exactly what chris sinclair was alluding to today in the paper and is again one of the things that i really wonder why he was saying, especially as a member of the DLP. I don't think that is the kind of thing that you want to say about your party so close to election day. Now to the latest COVID-19 update. A total of 412 positive cases were identified by the Bestos Santos Public Health Laboratory from the 1,988 tests conducted on Saturday. Of those cases, 227 are females and 185 are males. Of the 412 cases recorded, 70 persons were under the age of 18, while 342 were 18 years and older. A total of 105 people are in isolation facilities and in home isolation, 5,217. Deaths from the viral illness remain at 269. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, 
make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. Regional Happenings, Pan American Health Organization Director Dr. Carissa Etienne is highlighting the Bahamas as one of the countries in the region whose healthcare system is being severely challenged by a surge in COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations. We get the details from our news, Bahamas. A number of Caribbean countries, including Antigua and Barbuda, Aruba, Bahamas, Bermuda, Cuba, Curacao, French Guiana, Jamaica, St. Martin, and Suriname experienced 100% or more relative increases in COVID-19 hospitalization as compared to the previous week. The Bajo director's comments come as COVID-19 infections accelerate not only in the Bahamas but across the region and as the highly transmissible Omicron variant has been detected in at least 42 countries and territories in the region. Ministry of Health officials have said since last month that they believe the Omicron variant is behind a record-breaking spike in local COVID cases that has led to thousands of infections. And the medical community has not gone unscathed by the fourth wave as more than 100 healthcare workers were taken out of the healthcare system earlier this month after catching COVID or being exposed to COVID-positive patients. On the international front, tennis star Novak Djokovic flew out of Australia after a court upheld the government's decision to cancel his visa over his unvaccinated status. More in this report from Reuters TV. Almost two weeks after first arriving in Australia, Novak Djokovic has been deported. On Sunday, the country's federal court upheld the government decision to cancel the tennis number one's visa on the grounds his decision not to be vaccinated against COVID-19 posed a risk to the country. The orders of the court are, one, the amended application be dismissed with costs, such costs to be agreed or failing agreement assessed, two, reasons to be published at a later date. In response to the ruling, Mr Djokovic said that while he was extremely disappointed with the decision to revoke his visa, he would respect it and cooperate with the authorities in relation to his departure from the country. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates or like us on Facebook and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.